big turnout for your first meeting, Colleen. <laughs> I was just going to say, that's exciting that people are excited and interested in helping support the town of Beach Haven. So <laughs> let me in. Let there in. might be more to it. <laughs> like that. Okay. Hi, Did Nancy. You? Hi. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out if I can get on on my computer. I'm using my phone. Okay. Oh. All right. Well. Oh. It's 6.03, I have all of you. So if you don't mind, Mr. Allen, um, I'm sorry, we'll have uh, Colleen call the meeting to order and then Dan, you're the flag salute today, okay? Sure. Wait. You all right? Go ahead, Colleen. Uh, good evening. Uh, it is 6.04 p.m. on Monday, January 11th, 2021. And I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Beach Haven Council to order. Mr. Allen, would you please lead the flag salute? My pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States, States of America, of America and, to and to the Republic for which it stands, which it stands, which it stands one, one nation, nation, nation under God, God indivisible, 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 with liberty and justice, and justice for all. <clears throat> Went to the New Jersey Oakland Public Meetings Act, adequate and electronic notice of this meeting has been provided by posting on the bulletin board in the Beach Haven Municipal Building and on the Beach Haven website and mailing the same to the Beach Haven Times, the Asbury Park Press, and the Press of Atlantic City. Mr. Allen. Here. Mrs. Ball Miller. Here. Dr. Davis. Here. Mrs. Rutherford. Here. Mayor Lambert. Here. Thank you. I do have a borough manager's report. Let me just let a couple more people into this meeting. Oh. Cash receipts. I'm sorry. Cash receipts. Can you hear that? Yeah. I was trying to get onto a different device. That's probably my fault. Okay. Just making sure it's not me. All right, cash receipts in the current fund account for the period of December 1st through December 31st, 2020 were $546,906.19. Cash disbursements in the current fund account uh, for the month of December, um, account for the month of December 2020 totaled $1,434,935.81. The cash balance in the current fund account for this period Totaled fourteen million one hundred twenty-one thousand six hundred and sixty-five dollars and twenty-two cents. Whose piano is playing right now? Mrs. Lisa Saddles. Somebody. Lisa. Lisa. Somebody. Lisa. Lisa Statel. It's Lisa Statel. If you could mute, that would be great. Thank you. I think you. she just did. I think she okay. just did. That. Perfect. Cash balance in the current fund account for this period. I'm sorry, I already said that. I'm getting distracted. Cash receipts in the water utility account for the period of December 1st to December 31st were $24,914.83. Cash disbursements in the water utility account for the month of December 2020 totaled $142,433.35. And the cash balance in the water utility account as of December 31st was $4,080,433.35 submitted by our treasurer, Sherry Fuller. All matters lister, listed under item consent agenda are considered to be routine by the municipal council and will be enacted um, in one motion in the form listed. Any items requiring expenditure are supported by a certification of availability of funds and any item requiring discussion will re be removed from the consent agenda and discussed separately. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Resolution 34 is renewing a shared service agreement with Ocean County for animal facility services. Resolution 35 is reappointing Richard Conaway to the Beach Haven Sewer Authority. 36 is amending the Green Team Advisory Committee. Uh, 37 is canceling water charges. 38 authorizing the refund of redemption monies to outside lien holders. 39 is also uh, authorizing the refund of redemption monies to outside lien holders. 
And 40 is a resolution establishing meeting day quorum. Uh, do I have any questions on those resolutions? No. no. Would anyone like to remove any of the items from the consent agenda for further review or discussion? No. Nope. No. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion to approve the resolutions within the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Thank second, you. Second. Thank you. Mr. Allen. Yes. Mrs. Baumiller. Yes. Dr. Davis. Yes. Mrs. Rutherford. Yes. Mayor Lambert. Yes. Okay, there's a few items for general discussion that council has requested we discuss tonight. The first is the proposed uh, White Marlin tournament. Um, Colleen, you can take it from here. Okay, uh, we had a very interesting and informative discussion today with Chief Markoski. Uh, we listed our concerns and um, I know subsequently he had a discussion or uh, maybe Mary Claire had a discussion with Mr. Wittenborn who, um, sent the application in and uh, he came back with some revisions and I would like to hear from him uh, so he can explain what they are asking for, what the revisions were, and then we can hear from Chief Markoski and then discuss it in full. Mr. Wittenborn. You can go ahead and unmute yourself, um, Dave. There you go. Uh, hello. So um, the revisions, I, I had a nice conversation with the chief today and First of all, thank you for seeing our application. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and the biggest concern or, you know, was obviously public safety. And so the chief, um, you know, didn't have to convince me too hard that, you know, alcohol uh, was not, you know, something that we really wanted to be serving at our event. So I revised the application to remove the uh, alcohol from being at the event and to be quite honest with you, it takes a lot of uh, headaches off our, our shoulders. So with that said, we're asking the town to uh, move the way station from our club over to the Dock Road um, site. Um, we're hoping that this will uh, create some excitement around the event by making a public showing. And um, our tournament has not done well in the past several years, you know, mainly because of Sandy, but we're hoping to create some more excitement around the event so we can draw in some sponsors and hopefully gain some more participation by increasing our purse size. Dave, what are the dates of the event? The events I also revised, um, sorry about that on the first application. The dates are the 12th to the 14th. That's the actual tournament. The 11th is the, uh, um, that's gonna be the captain's meeting at our clubhouse. So we're, we are still gonna be using our clubhouse for events. We're gonna be having our award, you know, the night before uh, we have a party, we have um, captain's meeting. Um, and then also the awards dinner will be at our clubhouse as well. So what we're asking for is to actually move the, the way station to the dock road site. How much space do you think you'll need? Well, you know, looking at it over there, it's like, I, I think we're gonna need, you know, if, if you look at the, the lot, there's a, a paving, there's a, there's a straight line that makes a delineation that goes from, I guess, Dock Road over to Second Street. So we're gonna need that whole lot the way we're planning on um, setting things up. I don't know if uh, you guys, I'm assuming everybody saw our rendering that we put together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, in order to have those, you know, the vendor tents and, you know, the spectator tents, it, I, I don't really see any other way that we could block just a little portion of that off and still leave some of it open. So that's what we're requesting for. It's really a safety thing to, to have the whole area blocked off for those three days. Uh, Mr. We did Whit say that this is August of of this year, right? That's that correct. I didn't hear. Okay, yeah, August twelfth yeah. through the fourteenth. That's correct. Okay, thanks, Mr. Wittenberg. We we talked about it briefly, and I've since spoken to Carl Anderson, so I think I know the answer. But the lot, I see you have permission from Morrison's to use their um, boat storage areas for parking. Correct. Yeah. 
Yes, um, Morrison's every year they allow us and it's a um, informal um, email or you know permission that we get, but every year we do ask them formally. And I, I did reach out to Jane, the owner, and she already acknowledged that we can use the lots again every okay. year. But it wouldn't be practical. I know Carl said there's a possibility there may still be some boats in there. Wouldn't it be practical to use the lot for the tents or? <clears throat> um, we, we want all the action down at the way station. Um, that's where all the excitement's gonna be. You know, we're gonna have the crane there lifting the fish out of the, uh, the boats. So, you know, the, the public is gonna see the, the big fish, hopefully, you know, how the boats hanging there and the tuna and, you know, all the action would be, you know, it, 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 it works better if it's all down at the end of the lot. Okay, thank you. But there won't be any fencing, right? This is gonna be an all open air event. Um, well, because we are not doing alcohol, the chief um, had suggested he has some sort of water um, barriers that he can put up, I guess the town has, and to, so cars wouldn't accidentally drive into that area. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, there will be no fencing. We're not going to need because we're not going to need to be checking IDs, and you know the public will have access to the to the fishing wharf or you know the bulkhead mm -hmm. area um, all day and up until three thirty. So I see him shaking his head. I think um, mm -hmm. you might have to rent that stuff yourself. Oh, oh, sorry. I, I didn't know. That. I thought that you guys had it, or can I rent it from you guys? <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, I think you have to rent it from like a. A company that does road oh. security type of oh. stuff. Okay. Yeah, I think that was a misunderstanding. I, I was okay. uh, explaining how we used those barriers last year. Businesses used those barriers last year. Oh, okay. So okay. I'd like you to use something sort of like that. We can, I can help you find stuff, or you know, if you need uh, pictures, I can, I can show you what you need. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I just thought you you guys had them. If not, then we'll have to have somebody deliver them. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. If that's what you recommend, you know, for that sort of, for safety purposes in there. Uh, have we ever heard back? I know the first aid squad said they would try to have an ambulance if they could. Have we heard back from the fire department about their thoughts? Um, I personally haven't spoken with uh, Chief, but um, Dan Sweeney, who's a, a trustee on the board, he did. And the Chief had said that they were there, they would like to actually. They're going to bring a uh, the big ladder truck, um, okay. and you can see where we're going to put it, and we're going to fly the big American flag off it, and we're going to let the um, Beach Haven First Aid and the fire department. They're going to put out tables for donations. The um, the fire department they're going to put a boot out. Um, they can sell shirts or you know whatever they need to. You know that's <laughs> completely we're, we would like that. In fact, perhaps the um, police department could put something out there as well. They could talk about bike safety with kids or something. You know, we're, we're, we're looking to make this a town event. You know, we realize that, you know, being stuck on the edge of town over there by ourselves, it just isn't doing it anymore. So we're, you know, we're looking to partner with the town. We're looking to make this a community event. Um, it's just, you know, we don't see any other way forward for us to, to make it without the help of the town. Um, Dave, I have a question. So in the in the past, you've seen a, a significant decline in the boats for this tournament. So, you know, you're hoping that you're getting at least 100 boats rather than 30 that I think you had last year, correct? Well, our, our max the one year was 120, and that was way too many for our, our club to handle. A comfortable number was always 80. Mm -hmm. um, 100 was, you know, a, a few years. It wasn't really our average. Our average was more 75 to 80. We're hoping this year we can draw in, you know, 50. We would be, that's our goal. It's, okay. it's you know, but um, that, that's what we're hoping for. So, so is this um, some way to attract more boats is by promoting this as like a town-wide kind of festival with a public weighing station? It, this is your... Absolutely, that's 100% okay. our goal. We are looking to create excitement. We want to bring in spectators. That will bring in the sponsors. The sponsors yeah. um, will bring in the purse. With that larger purse, we can attract the big boats. Once uh, you get two, two or three big boats, then the other big ones start following. Right, it's a I mean, snowball effect. I personally, I mean, I think this is a great idea. I like anything really that brings back um, a culture that Beach Haven has. So I just, 
want this to be successful for you. So my only fear is that, you know, you do all this promoting and, you know, the boats don't come. So, but if this is, you know, a way to, you think, increase it by making it more of an event where people will want to come and show off their, their trophy fish, then, you know, then I can definitely support this as long as, of course, the chief has given (laughs) us his safety approval, uh, then we've that. tried we've tried several things over at our club to make this better we've we've you know so this is kind of our, our last effort and lots of um uh carl anderson actually wants to jump in um <laughs> can if he wants uh, carl yeah carl you can jump Bye. in that'd be great carl is um carl's been fishing this event since day one so he knows you know I've, i was a little kid with my face smashed up against the fence when Carl was on the inside. So Carl knows more than me. Uh, well, I haven't fished since day one. My father has, but I fished not shortly after that. Um, I, I think it's one of the things here is to involve the town. The um, Historically, this is the 52nd year of the White Marlin Invitational. That's a long run. It's the longest standing White Marlin tournament on the East Coast in the country, actually. Uh, it has a rich history. The fishing dates have been moved to better give us better dates uh, to white marlin access, which is also a big benefit. The other thing that's happened with the tournament committee, we've changed, uh, we put the, when they changed those dates, that put us in between the Ocean City White Marlin Open, which has 400 some boats, and the Cape May Mid-Atlantic 500. So that gives us access to boats uh, that previously we didn't have access to because we were up against uh, Stone Harbor Club and these other big tournaments. And uh, I think the historical perspective on this tournament for the town of Beach Haven, this tournament was started by Joe Bossard. Many old uh, residents will remember Joe. He owned the Village Pub and uh, was a fixture in town. But uh, he was really the guy that got this going. And there was a great group of uh, fishermen and anglers who promoted, who who were in town. Don Leak, uh, the Leak family, uh, the boat building family, the Johnson and Towers Company, uh, Walt Johnson, uh, my father, uh, the Ryan family. Um, many of these guys were, were traveling around and they did the promotion to get the boats there. And I think that we have a committee now that's committed to doing that again and helping reach out to bring boats into town, which is a big jump. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a lot of fuel for the marinas. It's dockage. Uh, these guys are going to restaurants. Um, it, you know, they're ordering their lunch foods. They're stocking the boat and getting their ship stores, uh, tackle, all kinds of stuff. It, and it, it was quite a popular event back in the day when we had the parade of boats going out in the morning, there was people on the street ends watching the boat parade leave, and uh, it was quite a thing. But it, it, it outgrew the spectator capability. Um, not everybody that wanted to come see the way in could get into it. So this is a way to open that up and create some interest for the town and people in town to be able to see it and partake in it. And certainly would like to have local businesses you know, benefit from this. Uh, so anyway, that's... That's just what I wanted to get in there. Thank you. Hey, Dave, would you, this is um, Chris Rutherford. Would you be able to speak to your, um, like your marketing for this and how you're going to get these people to come and participate um, to, to be able to make it an event that you want it to be? So we have a, um, for the first time ever, we have um, a presenting sponsor um, that's, that's basically got the pen in his hand ready to sign off as, you know, as soon as we hopefully get the okay. Um, that's South Jersey Yacht Sales. They are the big player of boat sales in Southern New Jersey. They are the salespeople for Viking yachts. They sell um, yellowfin boats. That's a, um, a, a big you know, sport fishing center console boat. They sell Intrepids. So um, just by us partnering with them is a whole nother source of, uh, of, of boats that are gonna be coming into our market. Uh, George is the owner and he's gonna market this you know, through his sales. So okay. we're pretty confident that you know, we can get the boats back. At least we can get back to 50 and then start building from there. And we're not gonna get them all back in one year. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. I had a question, if I may. Um, you had mentioned that you're not going to serve alcohol. Uh, that's correct. Are you going to serve at the clubhouse? The clubhouse ha- does have a liquor license. And um, I mean, I haven't spoken with everybody, but it's our intention to serve liquor at the clubhouse. Yeah. I know fishermen. And, you know, 
they like. <laughs> uh, yeah, we are also, um, you know, not only because of COVID, but it happens to work out good for any potential pitfalls, you know, that we may see this summer. We're working on a, on a high tech live stream. Um, so people will be able to view this, you know, at the, at the local bars, if, you know, we're allowed to go in there at the time, at the clubhouse, at, at their homes, wherever they are. So, um, yeah, we'll probably have people at the clubhouse, I'm sure. And plus, you know, we're playing on, you know, we, it was never really our intention to serve alcohol. I still kind of saw it as a checkbox on the application. So I just checked it. I didn't, didn't really know what it meant, but, you know, I'm glad that now I unchecked it. And I actually prefer people just to go over to Bird and Betty's and they can get a drink next door and, you know, they, they can come over and watch the event. We're, I'm completely happy with that. And I, I fished the tournament myself quite a few times and yeah, right. you know, back in the day when you had 100 boats and it was exciting. Right. Yeah, right. Huh. So, yeah, we're hoping to, that's what we're hoping to rebuild. If we can get mm -hmm. it back anywhere near that, I think it'd be a great benefit for the town. So you mm -hmm. know, as as we can do this responsibly, you know, Absolutely. I'm all. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Um, uh, Chief Markowski, we spoke earlier and it looks like you have, um, touch base with Mr. Witterborn. Is there anything else that you have to add to the conversation? No, um, so during our conversation, I talked about, uh, I think we, we should require them to put up the barricades uh, similar to the ones that we used this summer. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about vehicles traveling down to that area of the parking lot. Um, during the event, he should be required to have two security guards and when the event's not going on, I think he should be required to have at least one security guard there to keep an eye on his equipment, their tents and stuff like that. And obviously if they have a problem they, with somebody vandalizing anything, they can give us a call. But I don't wanna, I don't think the police department should take responsibility to watch his stuff all night long. Fair enough. Okay, you're okay with that, Mr. Wittenborn? I, I, yeah, I wouldn't expect the police to have to babysit our stuff, absolutely. <laughs> Chief, um, how do you feel about the traffic in the area? Yeah. Well, this still this still keeps um, Second Street open, Dock Road open, and both ways uh, of traffic open to the east uh, to the west of Bird and Betty's. So it doesn't seem like it would be any kind of an issue, uh, since nobody's going to be going through the parking lot. Uh, there shouldn't be any jam up there. It'll be just people driving driving past. I'm just concerned because we. Obviously, this, you know, in March, May last year, we had a conversation about this area, too. And I just want to make sure we're being fair to everybody. So. Yeah, we're not shutting down any of the roads. Uh, this is simply, this is the parking lot. Okay. <laughs> How are we going to go about um, notifying people in town, you know, that week? Or I, I think it needs to be maybe a few weeks ahead of time um, about you know, that we're going to be closing that area off. How does that go? Do you do, you do that, Chief? Uh, we can we can put uh, information out on Facebook, on the borough's website. We have the sign boards. Uh, during, the, during the day and when the event's not going on, that's going to, have to be completely open to the public to walk through there. Uh, we talked about it. They're, they're going to, they're not going to interfere with people who want to fish off the uh, dock other than the times when the boats are pulling up for weigh-ins, uh, you know, during the times of their events, they're not going to let people cast out because, you know, obviously uh, people's lines will get tied up in boats and stuff, and you don't want that to happen. But yeah, uh, that would be the only issue I, I would see with the public because there's a lot of people who come here um, specifically to fish at that location. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Thank it'll you. be a little inconvenient, but it's not completely shut down. Right. And there would also there would also be access uh, for his revised plan. Uh, they would allow uh, access for the uh, public boat slips. Hmm. Um, so if people who rented those boat slips or the uh, transient ones would still be able to pull up, get out on the dock, and uh, come and go, and that's where their security guards would uh, have to help with that. Right. Um one other question. Uh, the parking that you have on there, Mr. Wittenborn, is that parking public parking for people to come and participate in or is that for just event um, participants? 
um, because you know you are taking away parking spaces down there for businesses so um, that are down in that area. Would that be the alternative for people to park? Is that what that's for? Yes, the, um, the participants, okay. uh, the actual participants in the tournament, obviously I, I'm not quite sure what you, I mean, they're on boats. You know, yeah, but, no. no. The people coming to see the weigh-ins are, are allowed to use, that's where they would park. That's the way that we've always been with um, um, Jane, you know, mm -hmm. with Morrison's, they've always allowed us to use those lots for parking. Okay, it wouldn't be open to just anybody to park, like say people who would want to go to Bird and Betty's. Just asking. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, I guess technically, if they came and they looked at the, uh, well, I mean, it's it's for everybody. So I mean, yeah, people are going to come and look at the fish, and then they could walk into Bird and Betty's. Absolutely. I mean, it's okay. it's public parking. Jane is okay. allowed to use that. That's the way we've always done it with our event. Okay. Um, I'd just like to say that I think this is a great event. I think it's great for the town. Um, uh, I, I really commend you for trying to build this up. Beach Haven was founded on charter fishing. Um, it's exciting to see, hopefully see it coming back uh, more in a stronger way than it has in the future. And um, I think it'll enhance the businesses uh, in the whole town, but particularly in that area. So um, thank you very much for putting the work and effort into this. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I do too. I think it's a, a great thing. And I realize this is the first year my personal opinion is that if it passed the test with the police, fire, and first aid, um, that we should definitely consider it. But I don't know, um, Sherry, should we open it for public discussion just to hear if there are any comments from the public? I did hear from a couple people today and it was positive. I do see that um, Mr. Burris has his hand up. So if you'd like to do that, you can open the I just, for a comment on this. Yeah, as opposed to waiting to public comment, which I normally would do, but I think anything particularly germane to the tournament um, might be helpful. Sure, and then when we wrap it up, Colleen, if we could just get a little consensus of council, maybe a little roll call that we're all in support of moving forward, okay? A absolutely. Okay, Bill, um, go ahead and state your name and address for the record. You gotta unmute. My name is William Barris, 100 Northwest Avenue, Beach Haven. Um, <clears throat> this is a big deal. and. And I think we've been having this discussion for a few years. The Beach Haven White Marlin Invitational, and emphasis added on the invitational part, is the oldest white marlin tournament in the country. And as a young guy, it was a privilege to be able to fish this tournament uh, because it was always sold out and, and getting your boat in was, was somewhat difficult. I think after Sandy and when, when things started to show up in the bay, it's when everything dropped off uh, to a point where uh, they closed our inlet for, I forget if it was one year, or two years. Um, the problem is there's two other tournaments that, that started up and took the slot that the Beach Haven tournament was, which, you know, was the third week of July. And as a result, you know, getting the participants from the Cape May market that we would typically get in Beach Haven and from the Brielle market, uh, mm -hmm. We lost both of those because of the tournament being the third week of July. The other problem was there were many years that uh, Marlin weren't caught. Um, the Marlin season doesn't really start till, you know, like the beginning of August around here. So uh, them moving into August and, and settling in between um, the Ocean City White Marlin and the uh, Atlantic 500 is, is a great idea. Um, it, it's, you know, you've got a lot of boats. This, this tournament circuit is up and down the coast. And in every instance, probably except for Beach Haven, it is widely supported by everybody in town. People come out, there's a lot of excitement. There's just, you know, it's a, a real serious effort within these communities. We've just never been able to get that going. And I think uh, Dave Wittenborn has, has uh, taken the bull by the horns. Um, you know, okay, is it going to inconvenience our business for a couple of days with parking or whatever? Whatever. Uh, I think that this is something that's real important and, and I'm hoping that it uh, sounds like you're going to support it and I'm glad that you are. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Any other member of the public like to speak to this 
topic and raise an electronic hand. Oh, I hear somebody. You raise a physical hand like this if you're not able to uh, figure that out, or you can star six on a regular phone and make yourself heard. I don't see anyone else, Colleen. Okay, so um, what is the recommendation that we um, move forward in this tonight or just table it for now or um, you know, what? It's not a resolution. So really, I just need some general blessing from the council that you're uh, in favor of us moving forward to vet this application and sign mm -hmm. off. So if you don't mind, should I do a roll call for that? Sure. Before I do that, I just had a hand pop up. Um, Margaret Damiani, do you want to hear from her? Margaret, go ahead. You can unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. It's really not Margaret, it's Pat. Hi, Pat. <laughs> How's it going? I'm in favor. I think it's a great idea. Can you just great state your speech. address for the record, please? 112 Northwest <laughs> Avenue, Beach Haven, New Jersey. Okay. I think it's a great idea to have this, and uh, I'm all in favor of it. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Okay, you said I hear you said. I hear multiple devices running at once. It's just mm -hmm. giving me feedback. I said I think that it's a great idea, and uh, I'm all in favor of it. I think it'll bring a lot of business down to that potential area, and um, Come on, man. good luck, guys. Hope somebody catches some nice fishes here from the local people. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Okay. Mr. Allen, how are you feeling on this? Uh, I'm in full support. I think it's a great thing. Amy Baumiller. I also um, support this uh, event. Um, I just have just one suggestion in your under your vendor tent or any of your um, other tents to have maybe a table to actually promote the historical significance of the tournament. So when you have kids walking through, you know, maybe some pictures or something to again, bring it really bring it home to people that aren't very familiar with the tournament, but as they're walking through mm -hmm. to really give them a, a feel of, you know, what we want to really keep in Beach Haven and um, you know, what we really want to promote uh, moving forward. So that's, I fully support this. Good luck. You can respond to that, Dave. Yeah, um, so we spoke with Debbie over at the museum and Debbie's gonna set up a table. As you that's know, great. the Kellenbergs were the heart of the Beach Haven fishing community and mm -hmm. Debbie's gonna set up a table with pic pictures and um, have all old fishing stuff there and absolutely. Great. Yeah. Oh. All right, that's great. Nancy Davis, thoughts? Well, you got my full support. I think that's a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of uh, presenting the history. Thanks. Chris Rutherford? I'm for it as well. I think it'd be a great thing to do. Um, and for our community and the younger kids that are in this community that um, some do fish a lot, others don't really know much about it. And to be able to be encouraged to consider something like that, I think it's a great idea. So I'm in support. Good. And Mayor Lambert. I too support it. My only concerns were about the safety issues and we addressed them with the chief today, the fire first aid. It's also very nice to hear that all of the neighbors, we don't usually get that, um, are in agreement that this is a great thing and they're welcoming it to their community or their end of the, our community, I should say. Uh, but anyhow, yes. And I thank Mr. Yeah. also for making the accommodation asked for. Great. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank you, Dave, for joining us. Chief, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank we'll you. move on to uh, the second, second topic here, the proposed pickleball project. The council has asked that to be placed on the agenda for discussion. And um, today I did receive the last of uh, the donations from the pickleball community and the, the full um, amount of 29,000 in donations was received. So Colleen, I'll hand that over to you. Okay, um, after listening to the November meeting again yesterday, I was on it initially and I went on again. Um, I heard all the discussions and comments again, as well as being part of many, many previous meetings. 
So I think this issue has been thoroughly examined and I don't think it's necessary to open it up during this general discussion portion tonight, certainly public comment. Um, the bid on the nine courts was exceeded and I think it's admirable that the pickleball community raised the money they did, but they still need an appropriation from the town of 25,000. So I, my feeling is that we're going to leave that bid open and I would like to go out to bid on the six courts that should include all the suggestions from the pickleball community about reorienting them, uh, the sound barriers and things like that, and hopefully make this a very safe and secure place to play and answer or address the uh, concerns of the community as well, because for every pickleball pro I get, I get a, an opposite. And sometimes I've, I've just had taxpayers say, well, I don't really know that much about pickleball, but why are we you know, spending money on it? And I believe the town is still going to be in above and beyond. 25,000. Um, I do think safety is number one, and I do feel we need to do something down there. And that's why I would like to go out to bid to see the six courts in their entirety. Um, we're keeping our options open. No decisions are being made. We just want to see exactly what we're looking at. And that's my opinion. And that's where I stand on this. Who would you like to hear from next, Colleen? Whoever wants to jump in. And you do have Frank as well. I, I'd like to say something to start with. Um, I tend to disagree with this. Um, I think we should really go with the nine courts. I, I mean, I have no objections if you want to go out to bid and um, see what six courts will cost. Uh, my feeling is that the with realigning the courts, uh, we only need about 200 feet of more of um a blacktop or, or hard surface. Uh, I don't think that the cost is going to be much different. Um, I think nine courts is what everybody wants. I think you're going to lose these donations if you don't go with the nine courts. I think it's admirable that we've got, gotten so many donations. I, I, it was just amazing in a very short time to get almost $30,000. From what I understand, there were 55 donors. The average donation was about 500. Um, and half of the donors were from the borough of Beach Haven. The other half were not. Um, I think that was a, a, a pretty major commitment. Um, I really believe that the nine courts will um, allow more people to um, uh, actually be playing versus sitting on the sidelines. Um, I don't think it's going to create more chaos down in that area. Um, I mean, there's no way of knowing for sure. I, I hear people saying, well, we don't want Beach Haven to be the pick pickleball capital of Long Beach Island. I, I tend to say, why not? I mean, it brings business into town. Um, Beach Haven has always been different from the other municipalities on this island. There are six municipalities. Beach Haven's always been unique. It's, it's, it's a place where you can walk the streets, you can shop, you can go uh, to a casino with your kids and win a toy, or you can ride on a, um, a Ferris wheel. Uh, you can go to the theater. There's lots of shopping. There's lots of restaurants. People rent in Beach Haven uh, because it has those amenities. I run a house in Beach Haven, and people always want to know how close am I to the center of town. They want to be where there's things happening. People want to be uh, that people want to do things besides go to the beach. And, and I, I think this is such a great sport because it, it caters to every age group. And it's a wonderful to have a sport where elderly people like myself can go out and play and get the fresh air and meet friends and, and develop new relationships. Um, and I think it really isn't going to cost that much more to put nine courts in. I think um, I think we would be crazy not to go with the nine courts um, I very, very strongly feel that way. And, um, I'm afraid you'll lose your donations if you go to six. I could go on and on, but I, I'm sure you, you've heard it all before. Anyone else? Sure, I'll go. Thank um, you. Oh, this is a subject that has dominated a lot of meetings. Um, and personally, I'd like to see it put to bed once and for all. Uh, I did say in the November meeting, I think I'm, I brought up the point that why don't we at least see what six costs and that wasn't roundly accepted with the rest of the council at that time. 
I still think part of due diligence might include just, just seeing what that is, what that cost might be, because I think we have not only a responsibility to the pickleball community, but to the surrounding neighborhood as well. I've always said that. Um, I've been accused of a lot of things, roadblock installing, not liking old people. You know, it's gotten pretty contentious. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd really just like to get a nice, safe, level surface for them with the sound barriers. We have to be cognizant and we have to be fair to everybody involved in that neighborhood. It's not only pickleball that's, be, that's there, there's people that live there. So we have to be fair. So I would really like to see the best possible solution, but I think part of due diligence is exploring all the avenues. So, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with leaving the bid open, but also exploring the cost of six courts as well. Again, as Colleen has said, you know, not making a decision tonight. The only thing we're asking is to see what the cost might be. It may very well make come back and it's just about the same for six versus nine. That could possibly be. And then we're in a real conundrum, you know, so we'll have to see where the car, I'd like to see where the, you know, the cards lay at the end of the day with six versus nine. So, and I also think, you know, it's been pretty remarkable that the pickleball community has raised it. Um, I can't say that I'm surprised because they are a very well-organized group of people, as we can see on these meetings, you know, when it's on the agenda, there's a lot of people on the call and they're all very passionate and very, you know, appreciative of their passion, not to take anything away from the game or the people that play. So. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, speak. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I'm going first, Jamie. Um, I, I, I um, listened to emails that I received today and over the weekend um, for both for and against. Um, I also had been listening to and been participating in meetings that surrounded around pickleball um, since probably May. Um, I know that it's been going on for a while. I want to see both, um, both sides of this argument um, reach a compromise. I think that we would do our best by going out to bid for the six courts because we don't have the money to um, fully complete the project to meet the needs of all the residents in that area. Um, Beach Haven um, taxpayer residents, um, as well as the pickleball community that also joins in as well. So that is my position on it, that we would get the six uh, bid for six courts uh, we would keep the nine court bid open and see what happens because I think that's the best way to make a decision um, to move forward. Okay, and before you move on, just to be clear, if you decide to go with the nine court option, uh, we do have the ability uh, at this point to certify funds and move forward. So we do have the ability um, to award the base bid with the alternate windscreens if you so choose. Mm -hmm. Jamie? So, um, okay. Um, after listening to uh, the council, I also agree to go out to bid for the six courts. I again think that it's, you know, we have a, a new council and it's, you know, like Dan said, it's our, you know, due diligence to have all of the facts at hand. And it is a project that, um, is going to be built in this year. And so we have a new council and they should have every avenue that they need to make this decision properly. And, you know, there's not much open space in Beach Haven. So, I mean, every sport would want to have space available for, to participate, not just pickleball. There's other, you know, sports that would like any open space available to continue to have their sport. So, that's how I feel. I'm, I'm supporting the council to go out to bid for the six courts. Frank, can we talk a little bit about that? Frank, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. What would you like to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what kind of work will it take for you to get a bid out and the, can, look at the calendar and see what, how we can get this accomplished? I mean, basically, um, I mean, I have a specification prepared. I just have to change the bid schedule to reduce the number. 
and revised the plan to cut off about 20 feet. Um, I could probably have something ready by the end of next week at the latest. Uh, if you advertise, if I advertised at the end of next week, which would be around the 22nd, looking at a calendar here, um, I need to at least have a two week bid period. So I probably wouldn't be able to accept bids until after your regular meeting in February. So sometime around February, between February 11th and February 18th, we could receive bids. And at that point, you can make a comparison of what the six court bid versus the nine court bid is. And I assume we'll include the, um, the sound barrier and everything right in the base bid and not use an alternate at this point. Mm -hmm. Since no matter what you do, sound is a big issue and we really need the sound barrier. Okay, and I'm, we're just clarifying that um, we're, we're do, you're requesting that we prepare bid specs and go out to bid for the six cores, but turned the correct direction, right? Right. Yes. I know it's not law, it's not by law, but I like to always have the council adopt a resolution authorizing us to advertise for bids so that we're clearly all on the same page. So um, we could add to the agenda resolution 41 authorizing us to advertise for bids for a six court pickleball project um, if you so moved I just will I that was me reading it by title so if you do so move you can vote take a motion in a second okay would someone like to make a motion to send the bid out for six courts completely uh, reorienting, including the sound barrier and all the specifications that were mentioned. I'd like to make a motion. Second, anybody? I'll second yeah. it. Thanks, Chris. Mr. Yeah. Allen. Sorry, I muted myself. I have a noisy house here tonight. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. This is Bob Miller. Yes. Dr. Davis. Yes. Mrs. Rutherford. Yes. Mayor Lambert. Yes. Did you guys have any other questions for Frank about the bids? No, I think I pretty well up on it. I, I have a question. Um, so if we're going out for bid for six courts, including the, si um, the sound barriers, we don't have the sound bar barriers in the first bid for the nine courts. Um, I guess we will have to adjust the bids to um, well, the first bid we had a we had a base bid and an alternate. Right, exactly. So we you know just mentally put those two amounts together and, and know what that amount will be. But Frank's saying when he goes to bid for the second project, he'll put it all in the base bid. Okay, all right. Yeah, there'll be there will be a separate line item in the bid for the sound barrier, so you'll be able to compare what it was in the previous bid versus what it is for the six courts, but. You know, mainly the sound barrier is being reduced by about a total of 40 linear feet because we're cutting I mean, out 20 feet of the addition of the court. The, the other, yeah, that's true. But the other, uh, in the bid for the nine courts, they included wind screens. The, yeah. if, we, if we have the sound barriers, we really don't need the wind screens. So that would have lowered that bid a little bit. Yeah, the wind screens in the, in the base bid were $6,400. So if okay. we were, we had, when you compare them, obviously we would deduct that out, add the, um, add the sound barrier into the base bid in order to compare apples to apples. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another question is, uh, w we would have time then to consider both bids at the end of this bidding process. Correct. Mm -hmm. And Frank, they, and if the, depending on what happened, uh, there would be enough time to complete these um, courts before the season started, correct? Yeah, they, they were, it, no matter what you do, you can't color code them until sometime in mid-May to get the uh, temperature correct. But to pave them and put the fence up, I don't think it would matter. We, got, we received an extension from the contractor, I think up through March 11th, which is your meeting in March. So we would have the six court bid in in time for you to make a final decision and decide which one to award. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Colleen, I do see a hand up. 
I don't know if you want to entertain your public comment right now for this topic or continue with the general discussion. Well, I'd like to continue because we I've seen so many meetings where it's gotten bogged down right here and then it comes up again in public comments. So I would like to save everything for that at, till the end, please. Okay, then we're going to quickly hand this over to Frank Little. Um, we're discussing the mandatory stormwater management ordinance update. Uh, if you could just, I, we have provided the, or, the draft ordinance to the council, um, but if you could give it to us in layman's terms, that'd be great. I'll try. <laughs> the, um, the state decided to uh, update the stormwater regulations and mandate that all municipalities um, adopt the updated stormwater management rules. Primarily what they did was they introduced more green infrastructure into the rules. Um, you know, green infrastructure, plantings, grass swales, um, things that'll um, take care of stormwater, um, you know, to recharge it into the ground, basically. The other thing they did, they changed the definition of a major development uh, to define it better regarding impervious surface. Um, I think our ordinance said one acre. They have um, a total land disturbance of one acre, whether it's impervious or not, an increase of one quarter acre of impervious. And then they also started regulating surface that um, contains motor vehicles. So I think what may have happened in the past, um, people would put down a stone surface and claim that was porous. Um, any motor vehicle surface, whether it's stone or paving, is going to be considered in these regulations an impervious surface and is going to require additional stormwater. Um, on a barrier island, and again, we're, we're probably 99.9% .9 developed at this point, most of the um, development we have results in demolition of existing buildings and parking lots, and you get credit for that. So if you have a property that already has a building and has a parking lot, and that is 90% impervious, um, chances are you're going to see very little, if anything, in stormwater management on a property such as that, because the existing condition, the water went to the street. Um, however, the borough did implement a 60% coverage ordinance, which greatly enhances the reduction in impervious coverage, even when somebody comes in with a new application. So I think we've we've accomplished that in a in a different direction. Um, these regulations are pretty standard. Uh, all the towns have to adopt them. I think most of it would apply to a mainland community more than a community like ours that's in a floodplain. So um, again, we're mandated to do it. Um, I think Sherry, I, I emailed you an environmental alert bulletin. Um, I forwarded I believe, that to the council. And, and that gives you a, a two-page brief overview of, of what these regulations are about, but it's mainly the definition of a major development. Um, our ordinance also requires for lots larger than 5,000 square feet to install recharge uh, piping on downspouts based on the roof area of the building. Uh, that gets triggered when you have to get an Ocean County Soil District permit. And some of the other towns have that also. So we're pretty consistent on the island with what we're trying to do. That's kind of it in a nutshell. There's not much more to explain unless you have questions. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, obviously, Frank, you did a great job explaining this. I was reading it. And I know Jamie's much better at this than I am. So um, some of it I understood. Some of it was a little bit like Greek. My only concern is going forward, and I know this doesn't you know, necessarily affect anybody right now, but just that we know we never ever again give any exemptions to stormwater runoff. And I don't know if the state is now being more adamant about that. I hope they are, but we've done that a couple times in the past. And I think that's a really poor practice that we need to get away from. Thank you. Any member of council have comments or questions for Frank? No, I, I spoke to Frank today um, about uh, the new regulations and you know a uh, municipality can also um, go more stringent on anything from coming down from the state but frank and i discussed and you know a, a lot of these strategies you know we are so close to the water table it just would not work for a lot of our um, development but you know 
we spoke and I also see, you know, Frank has uh, the training. He was on the list. You know, I, Frank, I have I oh, checked you check, that. You, checked you know, that. I, of course I did. You I know, read I, that. I read that and saw that. And I thought, boy, I bet you Jamie's going to check to see if I've taken a course. Yes. And um, okay. our engineer has taken the latest courses and uh, I feel confident in our, our discussion today and moving forward. And I have no additional uh, questions or concerns. I passed the test then. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Great. That was going to be my question. Who takes that training? So I'm glad to know that you, you've done that job for all of us. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Bruce, question for you. I know you're working with Frank's office to make sure that this ordinance is properly integrated into our ordinance. Are we looking to do a complete repeal and replace, or are we going to be um, putting in additions and updates piecemeal? Um, I don't know yet. We're still looking at it. Obviously, it, whatever's most efficient, sometimes it's more efficient to do a wholesale replace, but I, I haven't determined that yet. Okay, and then does this ordinance then need to be reviewed by the land use board before adoption? Uh, I'm not sure of that yet. We'll let you know when we do the final review. We normally not, but it's a big update, so I didn't know if they had if they required that in this process. Only, only if it changes the um, zoning code to mm -hmm. see if there's compliance with the master plan. I I didn't see that initially when I first contemplated reviewing this ordinance. Um, so I'm doing it for a couple of municipalities, but since you raised it, we'll take a second look at that and just make sure. But I did not foresee that at first glance. Uh, we do have a deadline that we have to do it by. So I'd like to introduce by the 28th if possible. Yeah, that was the plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does this have to go to the state before or after we adopt? After, I mean, to the, to the county. It has after, to go to, after we adopt it, we'll send it to the county. To the county, okay. Right. Okay, we'll, we'll just make it then. And the county and state haven't put an extension on this because of, you know. I, I have to tell you, the majority of municipalities in this county haven't done anything. So, I mean, I, there was a notice that went out again from the state warning everybody. In fact, uh, we had a conversation with the county and they even mentioned to the county, hey, by the way, have you seen any of these? And the county looked in their schedule and haven't seen many at all. So um, we're going to be with everybody else uh, being reviewed at the same time. Okay, great. Okay, I think that's it for general discussion. Um, my a bill list. You know, the list went out. I apologize. Colleen, do you have the bill list um, up in front of you or one of you guys, if you could just throw that amount out for me? I don't have it uploaded here. It's very short. Um, yeah, wait a second, I have it right here. Um, the, the, the bill list is, um, was, wait a minute. 90 something? $94,306.32. Yeah, exactly. Perfect, thank okay. you. So you've all had a chance to review the bills? Yep. Yes. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you, Dan. Mr. Allen. Yes. Mrs. Ball Miller. Yes. Dr. Davis. Yes. Mrs. Rutherford. Yes. Mayor Lambert. Yes. Okay. So we can open the floor for public comment. And I do have a couple hands up uh, from earlier. Uh, Margie McGlynn, state your name and address for the record. Unmute and state your name and address. For the record. Hi, I'm uh, Margie McGlynn. I live at uh, 122 Fairview Avenue in Beach Haven. And uh, thanks for opening the, the floor for comments and all the, the work you're putting into this. You know, it, it was striking to see the opening of the meeting be a very positive discussion on the White Marlin Tournament. And, and I was thrilled to hear that. I'm not personally a, a fisherman or woman, but a lot of other McGlynns are. And I know it's a it's a great sport and involves many in Beach Haven and brings many to Beach Haven uh, community, which helps tourism. 
And as I was listening to that, I thought, you know, of all the meetings I've sat through of, of this council on the, the pickleball courts issue, we've never had a positive, open, um, energetic discussion on how do we make this the best possible approach for Beach Haven. And I would just encourage that everyone opens their minds and thinks about, okay, pickleball is growing popularity hundreds of Beach Haven residents are playing. Many people are renting homes, are renting hotel rooms to come here and play. I get questions all the time from those I play pickleball with in the, the Philly area where my primary home is. You know, tell me about your pickleball in Beach Haven because they hear about Ocean City, they hear about Avalon, they hear about Stone Harbor. They wanna know about Ocean City. And when we, we host tournaments, we get people that come in that say, hey, this is a great town, I, I wanna come back. And I would just encourage that as we sort through this decision that every person on the council forces themselves to think about what is absolutely best for Beach Haven, not, well, how much is in this account line in, in the budget? Let's look at this as a positive for the, the borough, a positive for our residents and a positive for tourism hotels and renters and, and restaurants and shops. And you know anyone who's ever been involved in capital project planning, and I'm sure all or, or at least most of you on the council have, know that the first thing that you look at is what's the need? What are the metrics? What am I trying to solve for? What are my objectives um, in this pickleball project? And there are all sorts of statistics that have been put on the table and that we could make available if needed that would tell you that nine solves for that. Nine gives us a very, very favorable project that will excite the pickleball community, that will excite the Beach Haven community, that will excite potential tourists who want to come to Beach Haven. Do you know what six does? Six makes all of us who go there sit and wait. You might wait 20, 30 minutes to get back in. And that is just not a great experience. And you know, when we didn't have a lot of people playing early on, six was great. But we now have so many people playing and so many more took this up during COVID. You know, I mentioned at a prior meeting, we play at the Yacht Club. We now have 175 members who have played pickleball there in the past, in the past, you know, eight months. And many are still playing over the winter. Our nets are still out, locked up to the fence. So this can be a huge positive for Beach Haven. So I would encourage that we focus on what's the best decision for the, the borough, what's the best decision in the long run so that Beach Haven has a positive asterisk after its name? This is a great place to come if you want to play pickleball, as opposed to, I'm afraid to say, a black mark if we back off on this and say, nope, because our budget only has X, you know, we, we're just gonna we're just gonna scrap the nine and we're gonna go to six. That does not meet the needs for a positive experience. So thank you for listening and for considering this perspective. Thank you, Margie, well said. Dan Roberts, you can unmute and state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Sherry. Good morning, good evening. Uh, Daniel Roberts, 2209 South Bay Avenue in Beach Haven. Uh, good evening. First, congratulations to uh, the new mayor and councilwoman Rutherford. Uh, you're, I know you're doing this for the community. You're not doing this for yourselves because I know what you guys are getting paid. So thank you for doing that. Community is why I want to talk to you all tonight. Community is why we and approximately 100 other people are here tonight. This has been going on for us, the pickleball community, for a long time. I remember sitting in a meeting in September of 2019 where we were given plans of a pickleball complex that was going to be built down at Pearl Street and everybody was excited and everybody was enamored with the prospect that fell by the wayside. We wanted to do other things. We wanted to build the courts. We want to do this. And every time there's a roadblock that is thrown up by the council, we as the pickleball community have answered that and have come to you and said, we will work with you. We will do what needs to be done. I had said at one of the meetings and I, I joked with some of my friends that, um, you know, I spend more time at, at Beach Haven council meetings talking about pickleball than I actually do playing. Um, 
but every time there's a roadblock, we said, you need money. We raised $29,000 in less than a month. And I think that you need to take into account that we, the community, raised this money because we were told that there were going to be nine courts. Now, let's talk for a minute about the various roadblocks that have been thrown up. As far as I know, there are three neighbors who have objections to the courts, only three. That's all I know about. We have offered to meet with them. We have offered we have offered to meet with members of council and say, here, look at the merits of their complaints. And if you stand where they say the, the noise is, it's barely audible. It's not there. There was somebody who raised a complaint last year who said, oh, the pickleball players, they speed up and down the street. I'm 56 years old. I'm one of the youngest guys that plays. We're not speeders anymore. We don't speed. It's not something we do. There's no parking. There's plenty of parking. We came to you with an option. We said we could park at the sewer authority if that was an option, because as we all know, that lot is not used. Six courts versus nine courts. Margie put it very well when she said that the problem will be the same amount of people are going to be showing up, but they're going to be waiting to play. Three more courts means 12 more people will play. For some of the council, for uh, Mayor Lambert and Councilman Rutherford, Councilwoman Rutherford might not be aware, there was a sign-up uh, system that was instituted last year, mainly because of COVID, where only 48 people could register at a time. And the sign-ups, it was harder to get into that than it was to get Springsteen tickets. That's how hard it is to get in. The sign-up would open at 2 o'clock, and by 2.01, it was filled. That's the kind of community that we have. Those are the kinds of people that show the dedication to come and to play and to donate $29,000, which is astounding to me because this is something that is not going to benefit me or the other people that have donated. In the, to, it's not going to benefit us, but in the long run, it's going to benefit the community. We have a tournament which will raise money. We have people that come into town. I have people, and I always say this, that rent my house specifically because of its proximity to the, to the pickleball courts and they get to play. It's part of their vacation. When people come for the tournament, they utilize our restaurants, our hotels, they rent houses. It is part of a boom to the community and it helps. We're only asking that you show the same kind of enthusiasm that you show for the fishing tournament. We think that we deserve that. Again, with all the people that are here and again, the only very scant few individuals who are actually opposed to this and we quite honestly think that they're while they do have genuinely genuine concerns we have addressed those and we've offered to do everything that they want you want when you want sound screens we'll do that you want us to do this we'll do this you want us to do that we'll do that but every time that we say that we're going to work with you you have to understand our frustration in that we want, and, and again, something else I want to I want to circle back to. Three minutes, we, Dan. Okay, I'll finish up, Sherry. Uh, that I want to circle back to. We wanted like heck to get this done last year because we, the pickleball community, were afraid that exactly what is happening is, is happening right now. We want nine courts. We gave you $29,000 for these courts. Respectfully, we request that you allow us to have those nine courts. We will work with you. We will work with the community. We will do whatever it is you want us to do. But please, there are right now 87 people in the room, 80 of whom are in favor of pickleball, most of whom are from Beach Haven. Please listen to us. Please respect us. Thank you. And Mayor and Councilwoman Rutherford, congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Colleen Bondi, you can unmute yourself. State your name and address for the record. Hi, my name is Colleen Bondi. I live at a 214 Jeffries Ave. And um, unfortunately, this is my first time um, making it to one of these meetings. Um, I have been kind of keeping up to date through the um, Pickleball site. Um, I bought in Beach Haven five years ago, um, had looked at many different ways of getting to meet people in the Beach Haven community. And um, through tennis, through um, you know, just being on the beach, et cetera, biking. Um, two years ago, I discovered the pickleball courts, had never played, and um, it is incredible how many people now I know in Beach Haven. Um, 
you know, again, kind of to reiterate, as far as community goes, it has been the best um, ability for me to meet people in Beach Haven. Um, I really don't see any negatives. Um, and many people have already brought up most of the points I wanted to. So I just want to point out as far as age, by the way, it's not only old people. <laughs> I don't consider myself old. And that, that was one thing I noticed is I love that there were um, probably just many people younger than me than older than me on those courts. Uh, I saw kids 12, 15, and all the way up to, you know, 70s, 80s. So um, there's definitely no uh, age restrictions to it. Um, and it sounds like the sound issues are being taken care of. Um, I know someone else mentioned something about other uses for the parks. The whole rest of that park, I don't ever see anyone using. Um, I rarely see people in the park next to the tennis courts. Um, so I, I'm not really sure how this is taking away from park use. Um, it sounds like the extra area to be used is minimal. And I, truthfully, I think nine is not enough. Um, as was stated, the amount of people that were lined up to play this year was incredible. Um, Pickleball is still fairly young in its uh, growth. It's still growing like crazy across the country. So I think um, you'd be remiss not to try and uh, to get ready for that. It's, it's a great sport and, and it's bringing a lot of um, activity to the community. Thank you, Colleen. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ria, Flynn, you can unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Hello, I am Maria Flynn and um, I live at 1610 South Bay Avenue in Beach Haven and I'm a permanent resident. Um, I want to first of all congratulate the winners of the council. I would also like to thank Mayor Davis for being a, a supporter of our cause throughout this whole thing. Um, I've been involved in this fight for three years and the biggest issue that brought us to the table was the fact that we had too many people for the number of courts that we had. Um, and the council has listened to us and we've, we've been here many, many times. This time I'm a, a little bit disturbed in the fact that the council kind of gave us a direction and we took that direction and we ran with it. We, want, we raised $29,000 in a very, very short period of time. And in a sense, I feel as though we've been betrayed by the council, um, that we've done our part and every time we do our part, a roadblock is thrown in our path. Um, and this time it's very disturbing because we have been amiable to almost everything that the board has asked. And again, we are getting re, uh, rebuked. It seems as though the council is not hearing us. You're not hearing the depth at which we feel about our sport and about where it is going in this country and throughout the world. This is a growing sport. This is an advantage for Beach Haven, like the fishing tournament, like any other or activity that we organize. Beach Haven is a wonderful community. Pickleball should be at the forefront. We go over to Long Beach Township now and we overload their courts. Our nets came down the week before, weekend before Thanksgiving. Since then, we have played in Long Beach Township and we have overloaded their courts to a point where we're, we're imposing upon them. It's not really fair. We need 12, uh, we need nine courts. 12 would be wonderful, but nine courts. This is what brought us here to start with. I really hope that the council listens to us and sees our needs. And we are, we are very, very united people. And we're people who enjoy the community and our people spend money in the restaurants and in all of the activities. And I really think you need to consider the fact that we are part here of this community. And we want you to see the value that we bring to it. Thank you. Thank you, Rip. Margaret Damiani or Pat, whichever it is, um, you can unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. I, oh, it's Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, me. Margaret Damiani, um, 112 West Avenue. And um, the pickleball is a wonderful addition to Beach Haven. There, it's such a growing sport. And there is just not enough room right now. I don't know if you've done any other sport like skiing or, or um, 
bowling where you have to wait for a spot to go do it. It's so discouraging to play the sport when you're spending half your time waiting to get to the court to play or whatever you're going to do. So if you could make it to 12 courts, that would be wonderful because it's bringing a lot of people to town. I had a lot of people at the restaurant talking about pickleball, visitors, tourists, and at the bed and breakfast. A lot of growing interest in the sport and it, it'd be a great thing for Beach Haven for the businesses and, and tourism to be adding that to our, our community, especially where I don't see the park being used much at all either. I, I don't see much go on over there. So if we, it's not that much room that it's taking up to add that to our, our community. Also, it's, it's environmentally friendly. That's it. To add, I would try to add, I would try put 15 courts or as many as possible <laughs> in the area. And the reason being is this, if this takes off the way they're saying it's taking off, you could have tournaments from all of the tri-state area come to Beach Haven. You could be known as not only the Queen City, but the Pickleball City. And you'll have people come down there for numerous tournaments. They'll spend money in, say, in hotels. They'll spend money in the restaurants and so on and so forth. So if we that place that whole park over that area, we got a couple of baseball court baseball uh, nets set up. No one's doing anything there. We got a couple of guys running their dogs, throwing some frisbees. They could do that in the park where the angle side used to be. So as far as I'm concerned, I would bolster as best you can, spend some money because you're only gonna get the money back in the ta taxes anyway. Think about it. All the sales tax, people are gonna go buy stuff, go to your restaurants and so on and so forth. It's a no-brainer in my book. Thank that you, guys. Are there any other members of the public that would like to be heard on this topic, or any topic for that matter? Lynn Van Name, you can uh, unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. Hi, Linda Van Name, 815 North. Atlantic Avenue. Linda, do you have your TV on in the background? If you could. No. Okay, that's better. All right, go ahead. Um, I was one of a committee that raised the money. And with a short time, we couldn't do rap rolls or anything fun we just had to ask for money and the only thing i want to note is that twenty one thousand out of the twenty nine thousand came from beach haven residents they are putting their money not just to play but beach haven residents are putting their money to this project the average donation from beach haven residents we only it's so many people was seven hundred seventy seven dollars and seventy seven cents the minimum was a hundred and the max was two thousand five hundred people in beach haven want nine courts or more as the last people stated and the only other point i wanted to make is if the council's intent on exploring all options Maybe they need to explore what Avalon, Stone Harbor, Ocean City, New Jersey have done, where they took some tennis courts and made a pickleball courts. We don't want to move down to Walsh Field, and they don't want us at Walsh Field. But if we've overgrown what we have, I don't see how that's not a viable alternative for exploration. We keep paying Frank little engineering fees to draw up all kinds of plans, and then we don't do anything with them. I just hope we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Amy Masters, you can unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Not Amy Masters, John Brinkmiller, 134 Taylor Avenue. Hi, John. Hello. I, I am John works for us, by the way. Yeah, I work. I've been working at the pickleball courts for the past three years, and I plan on working there this uh, summer. 
uh, and I am the one that designed the uh, pickleball sign up form. And so since I uh, made it, I had to monitor it for at two o'clock when people are signing up. And I saw almost every day, as Dan said, by 201, it was full. I would have to email people because the site could not keep up and it would let so many more people in. I would have to email them that they uh, either could or could not come until we had two sign up slots or two time slots that people could sign up for. And I would have to email them and tell them that they would have to go to the other one because we were full. And with nine courts, as uh, I believe Dan said, we could have 12 more people playing, which we generally have one person playing, one person waiting. That's like the average ratio, or it could be like two to one, two playing, one person waiting. So that's just, that would be 18 more people that could be playing in each time slot that they signed up for. And as people have said, this is gonna bring business to Beach Haven and there's the ice cream shop behind us. Uh, I believe they do bike rentals as well. So when people come to our courts, they might see the shop and decide, hey, I wanna ride or rent a bike or I wanna get some ice cream after I play. Mm -hmm. And it's, as other people have said before, I'm 18 years old and I play the sport as well. So people of all ages play and love the game. I teach and when I'm teaching the lessons, I have huge smiles on everyone's face. Mm -hmm. John, I have a question. With the courts facing the correct direction, we can extend the playing time, correct? We can entertain play longer into the afternoon. Oh. I think that would be doable, but it does get fairly hot and that that's a big problem. Uh, a lot of people only bring like one or two water bottles. And once those are gone, there are water fountains, but uh, some may not know about them. and. So maybe late afternoon would become a, a possibility. We're just trying to eliminate any crowding, you know? Um, that would be something to talk about later. I know that people go in the evenings to play with their families if they have work or something during the days. Uh, so they're playing at, uh, or playing in the evening would be a lot easier since you don't have to. More of that home day. Thanks, John. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all. I'll probably email you at some point as well. Great. Thanks, John. Thank John Harvey, you can unmute yourself. State your name and address for the record. Thanks, Sherry. Sherry, sorry, sorry, Mr. Harvey. Sherry, can we just remind everyone if you're not recognized to keep your um, device muted because people are commenting on the commenters and it's coming through to the entire feed. Sorry, Mr. Harvey, please go ahead. No worries. Yeah, John Harvey, 211 Second Street. And my question was actually off pickleball, but the one comment they'd make about pickleball, and uh, I'd say I'm a fledgling player, don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, but I absolutely commend the board for doing their due diligence on this and finding out the real costs of things before making a decision. And you know, it's, it's something that I think we need to be more conscious of going forward. And I didn't hear anyone on the board say they were against nine or it should be six. I think they were saying is let's understand the full course and not just make assumptions. And I think that's the right approach. Uh, you know, it's a good lead into my question and I guess Colleen, but I'd love to have the council members comment. Um, you know, what? what is your planning process for this year for 2021 and very specifically, you know, and, and Dan, you said this pickleball conversation has been going on for a long time, but we still have a parking issue with the summer coming, 
you know, we need to scenario plan on that. But what are your priorities as a team, as a council for 2021? Let's put pickleball right up there, but what else are you uh, focused on this year? Well, John, I'll jump in first for that. Um, for me, it's redevelopment. I campaigned on that and I still think that's probably the biggest issue facing this town. Right now, I actually haven't heard of anything pressing on, on the table, but I've got to tell you, this week has been truly a whirlwind with learning, doing seminars, a zillion phone calls. So to be perfectly honest with you, I do not have any specific items at this particular moment. Uh, I have met with Sherry, we've, Chris Carson was there, and I believe going forward, you know, meeting with the department heads and Sherry Bowler, and uh, because of COVID, there's a skeleton uh, staff, they're, they're staggering when they work. So I wasn't even able to meet half the people who I really need to know because they weren't in when I was there. Uh, there are issues and concerns. And like I said, I need to meet with these people and find out what they think since these are their departments. Um, I know you also asked about, you know, what the number one priority for uh, 2021 is. To me personally, um, as the mayor of the town, I think it's COVID and how soon we can get our businesses up and operating at full strength, um, how we're going to handle the crowds this summer. I think last year was an excellent um, blueprint, but I'm sure that there are other things that can be done. So we'd probably like to get some uh, citizens in to discuss it, as well as, of course, the business owners. And that's where I am. Thank you. Other members? I can, uh, I'll chime in. Um, well, thank you, Mr. Harvey. It's been quite a while since we've spoken. Happy New Year. Um, I know that I'm looking forward uh, to this year for a more community involvement with different committees. I know that one concern that a lot of residents have, especially the residents in on Taylor are, you know, the children and the adolescents and you know being a high school teacher um you know we really have to develop some programs to give them something to do um i look forward to uh creating a committee with uh community members residents business owners in a way to tackle this problem and i'm ecstatic with working with the new council and collaborating with them on this like mayor lambert said with uh with the state's decision day by day with the different executive orders and what we're going to do for this summer. That's also, you know, on top of my schedule is working with the businesses as well. I also uh, want to look at all of the different zones in Beach Haven again and um, looking at this, particularly the business district and protecting that district and keeping it a business district and not having all the businesses replaced by residents and replaced by single family homes. That's, you know, I know that uh, Nancy and I have been collaborating on that effort. It's very important to us to keep that um, culture in Beach Haven. It's a great place to come to. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm, that's some of my goals, but my short list, but you call for me. <laughs> Nan or Chris? Sure, I'll go. Um... Well, I think 2020 was pretty trying on everybody and I'd like to see what we can do uh, as far as hopefully the virus, you know, the vaccine rollout and the world can return to some semblance of norm normalcy next summer, which would be fantastic. But I think we need to be prepared for either eventuality. Um, I think personally, one of my pet projects that I've been contemplating lately, or, you know, is kind of spurred on by the windmill project. Um, it's kind of what makes Beach Haven Beach Haven is what's going on with our beaches. Um, and not many, you know, there hasn't been a lot of publicity, unfortunately, too much about this. Um, but, you know, I think we need to be integral with Atlantic Wind Power and as far as how they proceed going forward. And dovetailing into that as well, another thing that I'm kind of starting to poke around with is the upcoming beach replenishment pro, uh, process that's slated for, I believe, 2022. Um, I don't necessarily agree. I'm trying to explore other alternatives, alternatives as far as just pumping sand on the beach that winds up at a big island in the inlet. And because um, I was there in 2015 with my children and 
I think anybody that was here during that time frame could, you know, would have to agree that it wasn't a very safe beach to be on. And, you know, we were right out at the end of the jetties and where the waves were their strongest and we were expected to kind of run the gauntlet get in and out of the water. So I'd like to try and explore that. Um, and naturally, you know, I'm all I'm pro business in the town, I think, you know, along with Jane, what Jamie was saying, whatever we can do to further enhance our downtown business district, we need to examine. And, um, you know, outside of that, you know, I'm a big proponent of keep it clean and keep the town running smoothly. So. Nancy, would you like to anything okay I, I was muted sorry um yeah um uh first of all i think my right now my first priority is to get through this covid situation i think we still have a ways to go with that and beach we want to keep beach haven safe um we have been relatively safe down here um but the numbers are increasing um Hopefully by summer, enough people will be vaccinated that we will be able to have a summer. But I think this is going to go farther than, um, uh, it, it, it's still gonna be an issue for a while. Um, uh, as Jamie said, the business district has always been a priority of mine. I would like to keep Beach Haven special and unique. Uh, it's, as I mentioned earlier, I think Beach Haven is different from the other municipalities on this island. And one of the reasons is, is because we have things to do. We have a business district, we have great businesses, and um, I'd like to help keep them strong, which means also extending the shoulder seasons. Um, I think We've done an amazing job that I think COVID helped us a little bit with that. Uh, we've had a great shoulder season. I've talked to numerous business owners uh, who have called me to tell me uh, that in spite of COVID, they've had a very successful season. There are more people here that are utilizing our businesses and we wanna keep that going as long as possible. Uh, that's very important to me. I, I'm also very interested in the windmills and the beach uh, anything with the environment, uh, very active on the um, Mordecai Land Trust and Reclaim the Bay. And I would like to continue um, learning more about how to save our uh, sedge islands out there and promote more wildlife um, and bird life on the islands. And I think we all sort of have the same feelings. Um, I personally, don't think there's as big a parking problem as a lot of people think. Um, this past summer, uh, we gave up lots of parking spaces and parking lots, and I didn't hear many people complaining. Well, it was a different kind of summer, but we were busy. Um, I do feel that it's important that residents uh, that pay taxes have parking in front of their houses, and I'd like to see a way that we can make that happen. Um, and those are just a few of the things. I, I think Beach Haven's doing great. I'm very happy uh, with uh, what I've been able to accomplish with my team and council in the past. And I'm sure that we'll be able to continue making Beach Haven the best municipality on the Jersey Shore. Thanks, Nancy. Chris? Sorry, I echo a lot of what everyone has pretty much said. Um, one thing I wanted to just make statement, um, I remember during um, campaign time, um, people were asking, you know, how are you going to help prepare businesses for 2021 and the pandemic? And obviously since this is continuing, I think it's by starting early. So having that conversation. So note to businesses who may be on here, um, you have concerns or thoughts on how you want to see your business run in 2021 with pandemic possible constraints, um, please let us know. Um, I, I want to be a proponent of that. I, I, I met um, multiple people um, during my time um, running for this position um, who have a lot of valuable information to share and our, our wealth of knowledge. So I'd like to work with them, um, as Jamie said, to creating some committees to involve um, the kids here. Uh, that was another concern I remember hearing about um, that their kids didn't have anything to do and they were all hanging out in Taylor Avenue. Um, so if we can do something to help that, that would be really great. I'd like to see some money be put into to, to children environments or children activities. So um, I think that's all I've got to say. Yeah, 
So I think our shoulder season did extend, um, which has been great. I, I have met a lot of people who really love participating in the school here in Beach Haven. Um, we've gotten a lot of um, new input to our PTA as well that I'm a part of. And so I really like hearing um, people's perspectives on that. So my goal is to learn as much as I can. I know I'm brand new into this and I have been really thankful to Sherry, um, to Frank and to Bruce and to different people in the borough chief um, for helping to um, ramp up on what I need to know here in Beach Haven. Um, please reach out to me if you have questions or concerns um, in, in what you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. I want to acknowledge them um, and yeah, that's it. John, anything else for the council? All right, um, David, Mike, you can unmute yourself, state your name and address for the record. David, Mike. Sue Williams, you can unmute your microphone, state your name and address for the record. Hello. Go ahead, Sue. Hi, I'm Sue, Sue Williams from 409 Leeward Avenue in Beach Haven. Mm -hmm. And I've spoken before on the whole public subject. I just want to say thank you to the town council. I work for a nonprofit and I've volunteered for years for different community-based projects. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone that's volunteering your time right now to make Beach Haven and LBI a better place to be. And I just wanted to say that a couple of things. So we grew up coming to LBI with four or five families. We've played tennis our entire lives and our children didn't necessarily love to play tennis. Our nieces and nephews didn't love it. Multi-generations love playing pickleball and it's the fastest growing sport, which you've heard over and over and over again. So town council said that there needed to be some funds that needed to be raised and that happened. So we're just hoping that you will think about the numbers of the numbers of people that are logging on right now because of your agenda. Just keep that in mind. And uh, we're on Leeward. We're one block away from the playground, the park, and the pickleball courts. We never, ever see anyone playing any organized sport on that field right there. There are people that play on the playground, which is amazing. And they should have the playground for the kids. Um, and the, the tennis courts that are down across from the Pearl Street Market, I've never seen more than two or three, maybe 10 people max waiting for those tennis courts since I've been there for, you know, the last 50 something years. So just when you, when you look at the numbers of, when you look at the sign in sheet on how many people are waiting to play, we just want you to take that into consideration. And we appreciate all the work and effort that everyone is doing to make Beach Haven the most amazing place that it is. So I just want to say thank you. And we appreciate your consideration. Thank you, Sue. Carl Glumbell, I saw you had your hand up. I saw you. You can unmute and state your name and address for the record. Yes, good evening. My name is Carl Glumbell, and I live at 15 West 13th Street in North Beach Haven, right outside the sign. Uh, just a couple things. I'd like to echo what uh, Marjorie said. Uh, I think the White Marlin Tournament is tremendous. And I would echo that and just say, we're just trying to create the same kind of excitement that uh, that tournament does for the town of Beach Haven. Uh, as an aside, I'm down here in Florida. I'm on the wait list to get my vaccine and I hope I get it quick. Uh, it is a chore, but I'm still playing pickleball down here. And yesterday I had on my LBI pickleball shirt from chicks, by the way, 
who made the shirt for us. And a couple came up to me and said, are you Carl? I couldn't deny it. Yes, I am. And they said, you ran the tournament in LVI two years ago, didn't you? We really missed not being able to come to your tournament this past year. Well, they're from Connecticut and they rent down here in LVI. And they say they're looking forward to coming back and playing again. Now, I also think, and I might be totally off base. I think Beach Haven is funded pretty well. I don't think financially that the money that is appropriated for nine pickleball courts is going to break Beach Haven. I really don't believe that. So I don't believe that it's a financial issue for the most part. I think there's other agendas that come into play. The mere fact that we were able to uh, come up with $29,000 in a short amount of time, I think is an indication of how serious we are about uh, trying to get these nine courts. Six courts is not going to remedy the problem at all. It's like putting a Band-Aid on it. I, don't, I really don't believe it's going to help us that much. Um, I hope that you will look at this with an open mind and realize that with the nine courts, we'll be able to run maybe one or two tournaments uh, during the season that will draw people from all over the four states surrounding Pennsylvania, uh, Maryland, Delaware, Connecticut, New York. And as we have in the past, we will continue to donate a portion of the funds that whatever we have left over after expenses to an organization in Beach Haven, which we have done and will continue to do. I don't think we're taking up that much space. I don't think there's any other sport around on the island that warrants the consideration that we do at this particular time. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And I hope everybody gets a vaccine as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. All right, David, Mike, or Lynn Van Name, one of you. You both have your hand up. Mm -hmm. Sherry, can you hear me? I'm yeah. going to put Dave okay. on mine. Here, go ahead. Here. You're going to have to turn one of them off because I'm getting some feedback. Yeah, we're working it right now, Sherry. Thank you. There you go. See, you're on there. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, my name is David Mike. I live at 815 North Atlantic in Beach Haven. Uh, I want to echo some of the comments everybody else made. I will try not to go into detail to keep us here all night. But uh, the fishing tournament sounds great. But I noticed there was a lot of enthusiasm with some of the council members when you talked about bringing people into town, spending money, using the restaurants, doing all those type of things. Well, that's the same thing that uh, a lot of pickleball players do on a daily basis in Beach Haven. So I, I want to make sure you guys realize that. Some of the previous meetings, uh, it's been noted by some of the council members that they didn't want to spend money on pickleball courts that were used mostly by out-of-towners. Uh, we've gathered a list. We've kept numbers last year of who played and where they were from. We have 200 people that were Beach Haven residents and taxpayers that use those pickleball courts. I don't, I'm not sure where the council members that made those statements got the, that information from that were mostly non-Beach Haven residents, but it's false. And if you're making your decision based on that, you're making it on a false premise. Uh, if, if the major concern is money, that this project's going to cost too much for Beach Haven, then maybe what the issue, maybe what the solution would be is, is to move the pickleball uh, playing area down to Walsh Field, take the three back tennis courts, reline them, repaint them for pickleball, and you can make nine courts out of those, those uh, three tennis courts. At one time, those the, the statement was made that they didn't need those seven courts down there. That was made that was made back in a September or October 19 meeting that they didn't need seven tennis courts. If the major issue is noise, 
then they could move us down to Walsh Field, put the uh, sound screens around us, and that takes care of the noise issue for the neighbors on Nelson Avenue. If the major issue was space, you can put us on Walsh Field. There's a lot more space down there. So I'm not sure which one of those three issues is the major concern. I know the comments were also made that if we get nine courts, we'll have more courts than anybody, or we already have more courts than any location on Long Beach Island. Well, we currently have more tennis courts than any single location on Long Beach Island also. And that was not a problem when the council decided to spend money on tennis. And I have nothing against the tennis community. But I think the pickleball community deserves just the same treatment as the tennis community got. So that's really all I want to say. I just hope you guys do the right thing. We have a lot of pickleball players that reside in Beach Haven, but we also have a lot of players that come into town and spend money in Beach Haven. And I think it's an asset to the town and the town ought to take advantage of it. Thank you. Thanks, David. Are there any other members of the public that would like to be heard on any topic? Raise an electronic hand, uh, raise a physical sound. hand like this. Or you can uh, star six and announce yourself. Bonnie, you can unmute, state your name and address for the record. Uh, Bonnie Lenhard, 115 Fairview Avenue in Beach Haven. Uh, I'm not going to go over everything else that everybody has said Thank that you. I agree with. But one thing that this pickleball community has is a sense of community. And I've been here for 49 years, and I've never seen such a sense of community other than these pickleball people. Um, I have the ability to play pickleball somewhere else. I don't have a dog in this fight, but I think it's something that the council should look at with an open mind. And I'm getting a feeling, or I got a feeling tonight that the council doesn't have an open mind for this because of past meetings. So I really do think that the basic issue, the basic issue is the supply does not meet the demand. That's it in a nutshell. There's so many people in Beach Haven, forget Long Beach Township, in Beach Haven, that play pickleball. And I agree, I mean, from the beginning, I thought you should have 12 courts. That makes tournaments better. You can have more tournaments, bigger tournaments, bring more people in. And you have a small time frame in Beach Haven to make money. Once Labor Day, the end of September goes, every, all the businesses slow down tremendously. So I really do think it's a very simple problem. Supply does not meet demand. These people have worked very hard to raise money. It's a sense of community. And I just hope the council will open their minds and hearts to how hard they have worked. And this is what you want. You want people in your community involved. You want them to get involved. And I think that if you can't look at this with an open mind, you're dividing the town and we don't need that. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Any other public comment right now? Seeing none. Colleen, you can close the floor then and take uh, final remarks. If there are no more public comments, then I am closing the floor. And final remarks by council, uh, Mr. Allen. Sure. Um, tonight's meeting was again, a long one with the same topic that's made a lot of other meetings long. I wanna express that, you know, we didn't make any decisions not to do nine tonight. Um, I've listened to the same opinions on pickleball, you know, quite a few times there ingrained in my sleep at this point. Um, but I, I'd still, I would like to think I do maintain an open mind and I do admire the passion of the community pickleball exhibits. Um, outside of that, um, that's about all I feel the need to say at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Mrs. Bellmiller. 
Um, I think that we've made many comments tonight. Um, thank you everyone for your participation and joining in on another conversation that is very important to, to many of you. I agree with the majority that Beach, that Beach Haven is a great place to come. It always has been. And, uh, you know, I will continue to, in my, in my best ability to make sure that, that it stays that way, culturally significant and, and successful. And that's all I have to say tonight. Um, Dr. Davis? Uh, I think I made enough comments already um, <laughs> in response to Mr. Harvey and, uh, and my feelings about pickleball. I totally, um, I have no problems with looking at the cost of six, but we have the money to do nine. And I think we should uh, make a decision after we get the, um, the uh, quotes on six. I, I think it, they're gonna be very similar to the quote on nine. But anyway, outside of that, uh, have a nice evening. And thank you everyone for uh, sitting through this long meeting. Bye. Thank you, Mrs. Rutherford. Um, I too have the same things to say. I appreciate everyone's um, input tonight. I have taken multiple pages of notes um, for each person who spoke. I want you to know that, that it's been heard by me um, to be able to make the decisions that we need to make as a unified council. I am grateful to be able to work um, with these people um, and our town to do the best that we can for all the residents in Beach Haven. So thank you for your time this evening um, and have a good night. Rutherford, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, personally, I would just like to say, I would like to reiterate that no decisions were made tonight. And I think the council does have an open mind. Um, also, I feel it'd be remiss if I didn't mention the events of last week in our nation's capital. And like most of you, I was appalled and saddened that such a thing would ever happen. I sincerely hope that whether it's local, national or international, we always find a way to disagree respectfully and keep in mind that civil discourse is the best way to go. On a happier note, last week we received an email from the Beach Haven First Aid Squad notifying us of the promotion of Shirley Harris to the position of captain within their organization. Captain Harris's resume and credentials are outstanding and we are extremely fortunate to have her serving in our community. And I wanna say thank you, Captain Harris. And while I'm at it, I'd like to thank all the members of the Beach Haven First Aid Squad along with our police and fire departments as well as our emergency management team. As we've learned this year, their job as first responders has been made incredibly more difficult, but they still answer the call and we're very grateful to have such a fine group of selfless people serving our community. A special thank you to go out, especially this week, <laughs> to Sherry Mason, Mary Claire Bunce, and my fellow council members for all of their assistance and patience as I bombarded them with questions. Thank you and have a good evening. This meeting is now adjourned. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Thank good night. you. Bye, guys. Good night, everyone.